Okay. So to start, I want everybody to close their eyes. I know, super awkward, but close your eyes. I want you to imagine that you just won a really important award. You're standing on stage. It's streaming live, so millions of people are watching you. This is your first huge award, and everyone's saying you've made it. Who is the first person you think? Now open your eyes. Now I'm going to ask a strange question. I want you to raise your hand if the person you said you would think was yourself. Well, you see, I asked that question because oftentimes when we see someone who we feel is successful, we wonder, hmm, I wonder what they did to get to where they are. But when we are awarded for our accomplishments, our first instinct is to thank those who've helped us along the way. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a 24-year-old undergraduate student. I'm older than most everyone in my classes. I don't really feel successful. However, statistics will say that I definitely am. I grew up in poverty, fatherless, and the daughter of an incarcerated mother. My grandmother, who raised me as a young child, was crippled with arthritis and incredibly poor, though I really didn't realize it at the time. Many of my relatives were arrested. Fights were normal. Death was, too. My oldest sister was murdered in 2001. I was eight years old when they found her body in the Arkansas River after she'd been strangled to death by a man who worked in the apartment complex where she lived. Many of the women I knew had been sexually assaulted, and most either never married or were divorced. Stability was abnormal to me. I was used to dysfunction and brokenness. Nobody in my immediate family graduated from college. I thought success was making $15,000 a year at some blue-collar job. I never had loving parents. I never knew what that felt like. And for a long time, that was normal to me. The strange thing is, is I've had people tell me they're inspired by me. But when they do, I think of the people who helped me get to where I am, because I can't take full responsibility for getting here. So to talk about where I am, I guess I should tell you a little bit about where I've been. So when I first entered elementary school, a woman named Gabriel and her husband adopted our family. So Gabriel and her husband would choose a low-income family to help each year. And for that entire year, they would buy everything that family needed. So for every holiday and every changing season, Gabriel would come with all of the things that she bought for our family. At the time, my grandmother was raising my younger sister and I alone. My grandfather had previously helped her, but he disappeared. I never knew why, but I have my suspicions. She was crippled with arthritis, so walking was becoming difficult for her. So caring for, her, caring for us alone was hard for her, especially with such little income. The year that Gabriel decided to adopt our family, we lived in this tiny, roach-infested, one-bedroom home. I remember times where I ate bread with butter and corn syrup. I didn't think anything of it until Gabriel came with all of these things, things I didn't even realize we needed. She brought things like school supplies and seasonal foods. I remember Christmas that year being one of the best holidays from my early childhood, because we got so many gifts. I used to think Gabriel was literally an angel, and I still do today. I haven't seen her since I was young, but I still remember everything she did to help our family that year. So some years later, during my senior year of high school, I was physically assaulted by my mother. This was nothing new, as this type of behavior happened throughout my adolescence. But this time was different, because we were in public, in a her car right down the street from my school. Two years prior to that, my appendix ruptured, and the doctors waited five months before they took it out. Talk about a near-death experience. I literally almost died. The toxins affected my intestines, and I still have sensitivities to this day. 
Neither she nor I realized it at the time. And on that specific day, she was called to pick me up from school because I was sick and I wasn't feeling well. Well, when she arrived at school, she was angry with me. She told me it was my fault I was sick because I ate too much. Out of anger and frustration that she didn't seem to care about my well-being, I swore at her. See, normally I would just keep my mouth shut. But the resentment that I was having toward her was slowly building. And at the time, I felt like she would not understand how I felt if I didn't. Well, she stopped her car and started attacking me. I opened the door and ran out, leaving my jacket that she was clinging onto with her fist. She then opened her door and started to yell threats at me. She told me not to come home or else. Needless to say, I didn't go home that day. So I ran to my school counselor, where I was told I needed to file a police report. I was still pretty sick, and now I had nowhere to go. I remember sitting in the counselor's office for hours before they just gave up and decided to send me back to class until they could find me a place to stay. One of my best friends at the time was living in a foster home. I knew the parents because they preached at the church I'd just begun visiting. They offered me their home temporarily, and I stayed with them until I graduated from high school. My mom did not help me prepare for my high school graduation. They did. My mom did not attend the scholarship award ceremony at my school. They did. They helped me pick out clothes, and they cheered for me at my high school graduation. I don't know what would have happened if they hadn't taken the time to help me. I'm not sure if I would have been able to walk across the stage and get my high school diploma. And to this day, I'm not sure they even know how much that means to me. Those stories are just two of many, many stories I can tell you about the people who've helped me become who I am today. There's this thing about success. People think that it's something everyone can get. But for me, my opportunities were always limited. It's important that I say that, because people use stories like mine as justification. They might say things like, well, look at her. She came from this poor African-American home. So what's your excuse? Well, let me tell you, they didn't have help. I was lucky because someone reached out to me, and that made all of the difference. Thanks to the people who've helped me in my life, I'm now able to see the world from a totally new perspective. As I approach graduation, I get to see the world through professional lenses now. But still, I see evidence of the importance of helping people and how that not only shapes lives, and gets people like me to places like Harding University, but also how vital that is in the workplace. So this past summer, I interned at Ketchum. Ketchum is one of the largest public relations agencies in the world. And if you would have told me at 18, when I was sitting in that counselor's office, that I would have spent a summer in San Francisco working with some of the best in communications, I wouldn't have believed you. To be honest, I didn't even know what public relations was when I was 18 years old. But if it's one thing that I learned from that summer, is that even the best and brightest need help. Ketchum has some of the best campaigns in public relations, but that's not the result of one person. One person cannot take full responsibility for their achievements. But many people working together can create something incredible, and often do. Our success stories are not a one-man show. They feature all of the people who've helped us along the way. You may not realize it now, but you are part of somebody else's success story. So next month, when I get ready to graduate and walk across that stage, I have you and you and you to credit as well, because I didn't get here on my own. I had a little help. Thank you.